How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get those creative juices going. It's time to get uh, inspired. And today's uh, inspiration comes from Walter Crane. If you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. Uh, he was a phenomenal, um, really kind of pioneer of the uh, 19... Uh, early 1900s, around 1920s, uh, children's illustrations. Uh, he did Aesop's Fables, Beauty and the Beast, and a whole uh, plethora of other um, phenomenal children's books. So I'll just leave through here. You can see um, some great line work, some great uh, composition and color choices. Um, just a, a great, great artist. I love his take on Beauty and the Beast. It's kind of a warthog um, style, almost a little bit of like a elephant in there as well with the, but just phenomenal um, illustration style I really love anything that's kind of got a medieval theme for sure and this is another uh, great looks like a Knights of the Round Table style and, uh, drawing there um, again great color great layout great composition uh, good lighting sources and everything too and I like this one a lot because this one had those uh, very cool kind of flower Stabs. Yeah, that was kind of a cool idea there. And then again, um, you know, great, uh, strong anatomy and some interesting posing and great layout. Too. This one was probably one of my favorites of the stuff that I've seen of his. Um, I just really like the color choices. I thought it was an interesting character and just phenomenal. It really uh, helped. He really helped to. Um, Define the the children's book genre for for quite a while, and definitely got into those um, lovely like outdoor garden flowers and really that outdoorsy feel, and mix that into uh, children's books that uh, become kind of a staple of stuff these days. But anyways, uh, I found a quote from him that I wanted to share with you guys too. It's a little bit longer and a little bit more um, in depth there. Um, but uh, definitely something that I wanted to share with you guys, and that was, uh, we want a vernacular in art. No mere verbal or formal agreement, or dead level of uniformity, but that comprehensive and harmonizing unity with individual variety, which can be developed among people politically and socially free. And I think that's totally true, like, um, when, we're, when we're working in the field of creativity, um, you know, you're doing stuff that, that sparks uh, a level of inventiveness or imagination or uh, creation and you want to get away from um, you know having having the limitations of uh, your social standing or where you are there or the political um, bent of the day that you live in but really have something that um, that is universal and can be understood and shared throughout um, communities and stuff throughout time really for the stuff that, that really uh, that really makes a mark, you know, it doesn't matter what decade it's from or what century it's from, if it's good, good pieces of, of art, um, you know, music, uh, drawings, paintings, literature, any of that stuff that stands the test of time, you know, it, it might, uh, it's just got that, that universality to it. Um, and also a hint of the, the individual and making it unique that only that person could produce. And I think that's a really, it's kind of a little bit deeper and uh, kind of a little um, philosophical. I thought it was a great little quote. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get into our animation for today. Um, this is the Johnny the Box Rig. It's a free rig you can grab over at Creative Crash, and I will do a link to it down in the description below, as well as a link to uh, some more stuff from uh, Walter Crane as well, if you guys want to check him out. Um, so if you uh, haven't ever seen a video from from uh, one of these videos before, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome, and I'm sure you're, you're phenomenally creative. And I'd love to hear any of your sort of ideas down below. But what we'll be doing for the rest of uh, the video is I go off and I find a different rig that I've never used before and try to share it as a free resource uh, for you guys to find and play with. And uh, we give ourselves 48 frames, it's two seconds of animation, and uh, play around and see what we come up with. 
And uh, that being said, along the way, uh, hopefully uh, you, you learn something or feel like there's uh, another art buddy, you know, struggling through that daily uh, journey of progressing in their field or medium. And a bare minimum that you uh, at least get inspired to go off and create something of your own. And if you do, and especially if you use this rig, definitely share it down below so I can see all the wonderful successes. And uh, you can tell me about the struggles you're having or any of that kind of stuff down below. I really want to make a community that's just about, um, you know, consistency and striving for excellency um, here that uh, you know is open for anyone to uh, get inspired and, and go off and create so that being said this is the Johnny the box rig and uh, let's see what we come up with for this one so what I was thinking uh, I haven't really done for a while it would be kind of like a stairs kind of a jump walk sort of a thing so let's see if we can't get an idea like that because again you know this is a uh, in essence it's just a cue so what could we do that would make it interesting I think by doing uh, a jump and having it go gradually upwards uh, would make something a little more interesting here so uh, one okay sorry about that so let's go ahead and create a uh, polygon primitive let's create an cube here and we'll just make these a little too, too big. Let's go ahead and scrunch that down a little bit more. And go. Let's go ahead and zero that out. And let's push it a little bit forward here. And let's go ahead and copy that. Paste another one there. using Autodesk Maya uh, 2014 and it's a phenomenal program if you haven't used it uh, before there will be a link in the description below for you guys to check that out and if you're a student um, they can, they're uh, phenomenal and wonderful uh, every time I've ever had a problem or an issue they've just uh, been so excellent and such great customer service and, and uh, help throughout and then uh, you know, I should go find the uh, site that uh, Studica, if I remember correctly, that I used for when I was uh, first learning, and they have uh, great affiliate programs through a bunch of different schools and stuff, so you can get a uh, good, good discount on software and everything too. Otherwise, I know they do have some newer versions that are more subscription-based as well, uh, and if you've tried those out, definitely let me know down in the comments below what you think of, uh, of that uh, version of the software as well, because I haven't used that one. I do have used uh, 2015, 2016, all those. I do use uh, 2014 just because it tends to use a little less system resources from what I've found versus uh, the newer versions, and for recording and animating at the same time, it's just a little bit uh, easier to uh, use one that uh, uses less resources so I can get a better frame rate in everything for the videos. Uh, let's do one more. I don't think we're going to end up going that high, but I just want the uh, layout for the uh, shop to be interesting. So just on kind of a random side note, it looks like uh, Pacific Rim, which is uh, a phenomenal movie. If you've never seen it, do yourself a favor. Some great animation, some great VFX work, and a great story overall. Just really one of my favorite movies of the last few years. Looks like this sequel is on hiatus, so kind of, it's a bummer. Just kind of a side note, but I was thinking about that. Um, if you haven't watched it though, it's a great, watch it for the animation, watch it for the VFX, phenomenal stuff in there. So that being said, let's go ahead and get this done. Like I said, now what we're doing is just a couple little hop up the steps here, which is pretty much the idea. we are using uh, Autodesk Maya 2014 for this one and it's always good uh, to save multiple versions and to save often um, 
whenever you're working in uh, any sort of computer work, just in case there's unforeseen uh, things going on like power outages or uh, just anything that you might not expect, it's always good to have a version of your creative work um, that's, you know, within the last few minutes so you don't lose any anything that you might not be able to completely um, reproduce. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and lock everything up at zero. And let's go. Now let's use this one. Take the timing and everything of this, but we're just going to build the basics into this one. Squash and stretch here. I do like this rig, it's very uh, cartoony, really fun to use. 
seems like it's got a lot of great controls and everything too, definitely, uh, so far, we'll see it as we go along, but one of my favorite rigs that I've used in quite a few, probably a week or so. Otherwise, we're going to be clipping right here, and I don't want to clip that. So let's go and look at that now. Still, I have 
two frames. So we're going to have three frames, we might shorten that down to two frames, because I don't know that we really need it to be that long, but... Uh, do you want it to feel like it's really contacting? sticks, but just that it does really make a good point there. It's given a little bit of jagginess though to it, so I don't know if we're going to keep that because it doesn't feel as smooth. So maybe we can still do it, but just scale it back a little bit more. So let's see here. It adds a little more squash and stretch with that breath. But again, I think I'm going to do a little bit less of it here. Just scale it universally down a little bit. Just want to make 
make sure we still have a nice curve and it does feel like it's still bulging a little too much there so try to keep it nice and still tight and it's got a nice arc to it and so it's getting pixelated there So it's got another angle. Since we do have three dimensions to work in, we should try to use them. And we'll minimize that a lot more. Let's see how we like that now. I always like to add a little bit of twist if you can.
loosen up that kind of belly a little bit more.
what we're doing here. I haven't been doing a lot of stuff in the graph editor. I apologize. Let's go ahead and just tilt it. It's just all the way out. Let's try to improve the mark here if we can a little bit. We gotta make sure that we're not clipping too bad. We just want to hint to that, so let's go ahead and make it just a tiny bit. Okay, let's go and see that. If that adds a little bit of drag in the eyes there, that feels pretty good. I think we want the eyebrows to be about two frames behind. They still move um, pretty similar to what's going on, but not at the same time. So the eyes would go down. The eyes would go up. The eyebrows would go up. Good. 
clips off. And let's go ahead and look at this guy. I find a good camera angle. So let's take a look back at where we started. We were looking at uh, Walter Crane today and his fabulous uh, children's book illustration. And uh, he said that we want a vernacular in art. No mere verbal or formal agreement or dead level of uniformity, but that comprehensive and harmonizing unity with individual variety, which can be developed among people politically and socially free. And I think that's a great goal for all of us as um, a creative community no matter what it is that you do, that you look at um, art and creation um, and try to look at it as something that, uh, you know, is individual, but it's also, you know, something that, that allows you to have a place where you can get together and talk with different people about uh, different subjects and just, you know, find it as a, something that, that ties people together and brings people together. And it doesn't matter, you know, what your background is or where you're from or what your political views are or anything, but that it's just this special form of communication um, that exists that can be without that, if that's even possible. But I think that's that's what we strive to do with, with creating is have that voice that can speak deeper and stronger and, and more powerfully than, than you know sometimes words can. Uh, so that being said, a little more philosophical today, but thanks again for all the likes and subscribes and comments. You guys are wonderful, you're amazing. I hope that your journey as you're working every day towards uh, success in your field is going phenomenally. I totally believe in you guys. You guys can do it, keep it up every day. And that being said, uh, we will see you for some more animation tomorrow.